Hi everyone, this is Lucy from Sweet Poppy Stencils and as promised, um, I thought I'd show you the relief technique with our beautiful clear finishing wax. Um, it's an amazing product and with this particular wax you can seal your products, you can do the relief technique and what I love most of all is that you can create your own gilding waxes as well, which is brilliant. So with any pigment or any mica powder, you've then got a gilding wax. So let's start off with, um, we're going to show you how we can do the um, seahorse, um, but I won't do the whole thing, I'll just do the background for you. So pop that to one side. So I've got my clear wax and this is my original pot from about four years ago. So it really does go such a long way. So on my glass mat, I've got a splodge of it about um quarter to half a teaspoon um you'll get to know how much to start using so i'm just making it soft and just working it in what i wouldn't do is i wouldn't heat it to soften it up for this particular technique um because it makes it just a bit squidgy then so just remember you're working with a wax so obviously um water and everything is going to resist against it so bit of card and magnetic sheet and all we're going to do is pop that on and you all know how much I rate using a magnetic sheet with metal stencils um, it is amazing let me just grab some tape so because I don't want it to go onto the cardstock where um, my fresh cardstock I only want it to go over the bubbles and all we're doing is I'm just going to mask off there we go lovely and you don't have to do it any you know fancy masking or anything because we're going to move it all the way around so for this technique I don't use smoothie I actually use an applicator okay and it's got a bit of cut and dry on the end of it you could use um, a bit of cut and dry but just keep it square flat and just gently go over the trick is you're going to gently, and there is no weight, I'm not pushing it down, I'm just skimming over the surface. And you're better to build a layer up, so we're squidging in, and then back over, and we're just skimming over. I'm not digging into the um, stencil, I'm not, I'm not splodging like that, I'm just skimming. So again, we're just building up our layer, bit by bit and we're going to move so I'm lifting up I've got a little bit of wax there you can see where it's built up around the edges so moving and I think we will go there so this is really one of these techniques the more you play with it the better you will get um, like any technique it's you know building up your strengths on your techniques and you'll know what you've done wrong what you've done right um, each time you use it. So again, we're skimming, skimming. So we're just building up a layer. Oops. And we're lifting up. And we're going across. Now you've got to remember wherever you put wax, ink is going to resist. So if you're then trying to stamp onto it, you've just got to be aware where you're putting your wax because it does struggle to take ink on top of it. Um, for example, you know, with the seahorse, just remember you'll have to keep building and building and building your layers of your black ink because it will resist. So again, we're taking a little bit. Maybe it was a little bit too much that I actually put down initially, but you could scrape that and put that back in the pot. It, you've not hurt it. So again, and pop it on. And we're taking, and we're working it. And this won't get wa washed. There's no need to wash this. This will just be my wax applicator. So I keep it in a little bag away from everything. Um, so that the wax doesn't hit any of my projects and lovely so again lift up so to get rid of that 
That you would wash in warm soapy water with a nail brush. Pop that into my water that I've got to one side. And I'm going to just pop my little applicator back in to its bag. And as I said, that can go back into the pot. There is no wasting on it. Lovely. So it smells beautiful. It's um, eucalyptus and a citron, citrus uh, smell to it. So it has a beautiful, beautiful smell. Um, and it's, it's just a brilliant, brilliant product. So let's, what we're going to do is, I like going over with sprays. I do, I have to um, just master the technique of going over with a um, ink pad um, because obviously you'll be disturbing the wax. So it's one of these that, again, as I said, the more you do, the better you're going to get. So again, and unfortunately, the sprays can be a little bit mucky, but I do love oxide. Oh, that's my poorly one, so let's just clean off the rim. It needs a, a little bit of TLC. So I need to take that off and just spritz it in, uh, get water through it to clear it. that shape. It's a while since I shook them. And this is, yeah, Peacock Feather, one of my favourites. Right, so I'm going to get a bit of kitchen towel because I like doing it this way. You could, you know, gentle waft of a heat gun over it if you wanted, but I tend not to do a heat gun, not until the end of it. So you can see where the wax is just resisting. Let me take up all this. That's, um, we're going to go over the top of it again. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. So again, we're going, I'm going to go in with a heat gun. So excuse the noise. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, melt all the wax that was like residue on top. And the more you play with it, the better that you will find you will get on with it. Is I don't know, let's give it a quick. I do sometimes like let's get another quick piece just to shift off a little bit more. And you could keep going over and over and over, um, spraying that until you were happy that you've got the finish that you wanted. Let me clean this up a second. nice and dry. So what you can also do is, have I got a sponge? I don't know if I've got any ink on this because I've put my distresses and it's a little bit wet. So what you could do is you could go over with your inks, just building up your layers until you are happy. Just keep on applying, applying. If you're not happy with it, because you've got a wax on there, all you do is you can take away. Now what it's also good for is, let me pop that to one side a second, it is good for sealing off your projects. So these have um, a wax on top of them where I've applied a little bit of the wax um, and buffed it over. So if I get any water on them, they're not going to, because these were oxide sprays, they're not going to then lift off. So all you're going to do is if you want to, say if you've done your beautiful project, so 
all I've done is once I've got my background, I've put my stencil on, this is archival ink, so I know that's not going to budge, but this is Distress um, Oxide Sprays. So I know if I get a splodge of water at a show, it's nothing worse because um, the amount of times I've ruined a project um, by getting splodges. So I've got a little bit of wax, maybe a little bit too much, a little bit of wax on a bit of kitchen roll. And then all you're going to do is you're just sealing off and it gives it a beautiful coat of not a high gloss I wouldn't say but it is sealing in and you can tell so all you do is just wash it over that will melt any wax in and then that will seal it for you brilliant is that and all it's doing is it's sealing it in so remember for your really relief technique apply your stencil in a circular motion a gentle circular motion go over the top with your wax stencil off warm soapy water to wash it and then you can spritz it over um, I do find once I've done the first layer then dry it and then I can start applying my um, ink pads over the top of it and to seal off your project just a bit of kitchen roll a bit of wax on and then you can buff it up and then just quick waft over with a heat gun I hope you enjoyed that and for part two demonstration what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make your waxes and your mica sprays thanks for joining me